lift your hands and thank God for his blessing. Thank God for his mercy. He came along and brought us the light. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity that we have in you to serve you, to live for you. Let your will be done, O Lord. Glorify yourself, Lord, in our midst, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 1. I just wanted us to have a service, no matter how short it is, so that at least we've started having our impartation service for the year. All right, I can't see you, but I believe you can see me. Okay, now, I just want to um, show you something about God's word, and I just want to say a few words to you, all right? Jeremiah, how many believe God has called you? Huh? You believe? Okay. Now, this is Jeremiah. Do you know what Jeremiah is about? Um, Israel was, was, was totally destroyed and um, carried away into captivity. Are you there? And um, into Babylon. Okay. And uh, after that, we had we had um, several prophets prophesying, and Jerusalem was trodden under, you know, the Gentiles for a long time. But building up to this uh, exile, right, where different prophets. And the one prophet who was really speaking against, I mean, trying to warn these people to turn away from their evil ways because God was going to destroy everything was, that person was Jeremiah. Alright? And so the whole of Jeremiah is, it, it, could, it could actually be to you quite a boring book because it's, it's, it's the warnings are so intense. You understand? The warnings are so throughout the whole book. It's just warnings, 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 warnings. And, you know, like somebody was su- summarizing success. You know, Jeremiah was rejected by, by the king, by other kings was rejected by the priests, was rejected by the, uh, the people, was thrown in the dungeon, was thrown in prison. I mean, he was, he, was, he was really, he was not successful by what we call success. You get it? And he was carried away to Egypt, he was brought back, he was carried, I mean, all kinds of... And he won the people, nobody listened to him. It's, it's something. You get it? So, I just want to show that to you very briefly. Look in Jeremiah chapter 1. This was his calling. All right? Verse 1, chapter verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Say that God knows me. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet to the nations. And I said, Our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said to him, Say not, I am a child. Thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Amen? And the Lord said to him, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have said this thee this day over the nations, etc., etc. Moreover, the Lord, word of the Lord came unto me, verse 11. He said, What do you see? Jeremiah. He said, I see a rod of almond tree. And then the Lord said unto him, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Maybe an almond tree is something that matures very quickly. The word of the Lord came unto me a second time. What seest thou? He said, I see a seething pot, like a boiling pot with steam coming out. And the face thereof is set towards the north. And the Lord said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the land. 
For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdom of the north, said the Lord, they shall come and shall set everyone his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem, against all the walls thereof round about, and against all the cities. And I will, I, I will utter judgments against them, touching all their wickedness, who have forsaken me, and have burned incense to other gods, and worshipped the works of their own hands. Thou therefore get up thy lawns, and rise, and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. But behold, I have made thee this day a defensed city. All right? Verse 19. No, listen. Verse 18. A defense city, an iron pillar, brazen walls against the whole land, against the cities, the kings of Judah, the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, against the people of the land. He was against everybody. Do you understand his calling? Unlike us who want members in our churches. And it's like we would do anything to have members. Even if he's only in a drinking spot, we'll keep him in the church. Even if he has three wives, we keep him in the church. If he's a thief, we keep him in the church. And we are proud of the thieves in our church. And we are proud of the funny things that we have in our churches. Because we, we really deem success to be, you know, something outward that people see and praise you for. All right? But I want you to see success in a different way. See it in the eyes of God. God's eyes. God, the way God sees success. God sees success very different from the way we see it. To be successful, you may not... You may not you may not be liked. You may not be, you may not be praised. You may not be accepted. You, know, you may not be honored. You may never live to, to see, you know, certain things. But I tell you, all things that we have and are doing are very, very temporary. Recently, God revealed to me that life is short, but the seasons within life are even shorter. The season when you do this, season when you be like this, season when you do this, they are all short seasons. So within life, the seasons are very short. So whatever you are doing, do it with zeal and with strength because the Lord is giving you a good season. Amen. All right. Verse 19. He's telling him how his ministry is going to work out, how things are going to be successful. Verse 19. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail, for I am with thee, says the Lord. All right? Now, verse chapter 2. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, That says the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness. Verse 3. Israel, Israel was holiness unto the Lord, and the first fruits of his increase. All right? Hear ye the Lord. Verse 5. What iniquity have your fathers found in me that they have gone far and they have walked after vanity and have become vain? Alright? Neither, neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us out of the land of Egypt and led us through the wilderness? Alright? Verse 8. The priest said not, where is the Lord? Even the priests are not calling for the Lord. Wherefore I will plead with you in verse 9. And I'll pass over the aisles in verse 10. And consider diligently and see if there be such a thing. Has a nation changed their gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, and be horribly afraid. Verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. Alright. And they have exchanged, forsaken the fountain of living water and healed them out cisterns. That can hold no water. Alright? And he goes on. I mean, this is the same thing. That's why I'm saying that it can be quite boring. But I think this was the most prolonged warning because Jeremiah lived until it actually happened. So he was the last warning. You understand? So, if you don't take anything out of this service, take this out of this service. Success is what God defines it to be. If you have obeyed God, you are successful. Yeah. He had nothing in the... He was a prisoner and a, and a, and a, and a refugee. 
by the end of his calling. Yeah. Now turn to the last chapter of Jeremiah. Let's see how it ended. And he's the only one who wrote a how do you a book that comes after the book? What is it called? Sequel or is it epilogue? What is an epilogue? Uh huh. Epilogue is like the end. But he okay, maybe a sequel. He wrote a sequel to his book. And the sequel to his book was a lamentation. <laughs> he was lamenting. The, the whole sequel was lamenting on what had happened. Now, this is, the, this is Zedekiah. He arrested Jeremiah. If you look at somewhere in the middle there, you see he arrests Jer- Jer- uh, Jeremiah, puts him in prison. Do you understand? Throws him in a dungeon. All kinds of things to Jeremiah. Are you there? I can, I can even find you one of those. But, you know, I'm sure you believe me. Do you believe me? Yeah. It's, it's right there. And you see that the end comes when this Zedekiah is in the system. Very, very bad. Zedekiah. All right. But all over you see Zedekiah, very, very bad guy. Anyway, so Zedekiah was 21 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned for 11 years. And his mother's name was Hamutal. And he did that which was evil. Now, for through the anger of the Lord, it came to pass in Jerusalem and Judah, till he had cast them out of his presence, that Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon, which was one of the things Jeremiah persisted in saying, do not rebel against the king of Babylon. Just flow with him. Because you are doomed. Don't fight it. How many can accept when God says, don't fight something? I'm the one who has brought it. Some things you shouldn't fight. Okay? Just flow. That's how it's, it is. That's how it's going to be. All right? But it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, the tenth month, the tenth day, that Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, came. Do you remember at the very beginning of the book? He said, what do you see? I said, a seething pot. And the, thing, the steam is going towards the north. He said, there's something is coming from the north. Mercy. And it came to pass that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all his army against Jerusalem, and pitched against it, and built forts against it round about. So the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. That means that they surrounded the city for two years. From Zedekiah's ninth year to his eleventh year, they were in the city. None went in, none came out. <laughs> And he has used 51 chapters to warn them about this thing. This is the last chapter of Jeremiah. 51 long... And Jeremiah, each chapter is very long. If you are not serious, don't try to read it. (laughs) Hey! So... In the, the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. And in the fourth month, in the ninth day of the month, the famine was so in the city that there was no bread. Mercy. Tell everybody to Jeremiah chapter 9. Verse 1. Oh, that my head were waters, and my house fountains of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. He's just prophesying how they are going to suffer. Huh? Verse 7. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I will melt them and try them. Their tongue is as, as an arrow shot out. It speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in his heart he layeth wait. Shall I not visit them for these things? Verse 9. Shall my soul not be avenged on such a nation? For the mountains will I take up a weeping and wailing, and for the, inhab- for hab- for the habitations of the wilderness, a lamentation. Because they are burned up. So that none can pass through them. Neither can men hear the voice of the cattle. Both the fowl of the heavens and the beast are fled. They are gone. I will make Jerusalem heaps. 
and a den of dragons, and a he- den of dragons, and I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. No, as early as chapter 9, it gets worse as you go along. This is one of the lighter, what do you call it? Who is the wise man that he may understand? Who is he whom the mouth, through whom the mouth of the Lord has spoken that he may declare it? For what the land perisheth and is burned up like wilderness that none passeth through. The Lord saith, because they have forsaken my law which I set over them and have not obeyed my voice, but have walked after the imagination of their own hearts. Thus says the Lord, verse 15. I will feed them, even these people, with wormwood. I will give them poison to drink. I will scatter them among the heathen, whom neither they nor their fathers have known. I will send the sword after them until I have consumed them. Verse 17. Thus saith the Lord, Consider ye and call for the morning women that they may come, and send for cunning women that they may come. Let them make haste and take up a wailing for us, that our eyes may run down with tears. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land, because our dwellings have cast us out. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O ye one, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth, and teach your daughter wailing. You know, you know to teach your children how to cry. And everyone her neighbor lamentations. Verse 21. For death is come up into our windows, and is entered into our palaces. To cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. Speak, that saith the Lord. Even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field. And as the handful after the harvest man. And none shall gather them. That says the Lord. Eh? Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him glory that let him that glorious glory in this that he understands and knoweth me for i am the lord that exercise loving kindness and judgment all right now are you there go back to 52 are you there so that you see i'm just trying to show you that he predicted and predicted and never changed his mind never decided to be a successful pastor bishop saki don't be a successful pastor. Be a pastor who has obeyed the word of the Lord to you. That's all. Yes, that's what I can say. Don't try to be a success. You are wasting your time. What does God say? Even if everybody is against you, brother, shoot for it. So they were, they were in the city to the 11th year. Remember, two years. Now, in the fourth month, verse 6, in the ninth day of the man, the famine was sore in the city, so that there was no bread for the people of the land. Then the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled, and went forth out of the city by night, by the way of the gate between the two walls, which was by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans, or the Babylonians, were by the city round about, and they went by the way of the plain. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. And all his army was scattered from him. Oh, then they took the king and carried him up into the king of Babylon to Ribla in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. Then the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. And he slew also the princes of Judah in Ribla. Then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah, the guy who arrested um, Jeremiah. And the king of Babylon bound him in chains and carried him to Babylon and put him in prison till the day of his death. Now in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, which was the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, came Nebuzar, Nebuzaradan. You see, after Nebuchadnezzar came, it's not over. Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, which served the king of Babylon, into Jerusalem. And he burned the house of the Lord. And the king's house. They hadn't burned them all. But now somebody is coming to continue. 
And all the houses of Jerusalem, all the houses of the great men, he burned with fire. And all the army of the Chaldeans that were with the captain of the guard, break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive certain of the poor people, and the residue of the people that remained in the city, and those that fell away, that fell to the king of Babylon, and the rest of the multitude. But Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left certain of the poor of the land for vine dresses and for husbandmen. And also the pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord, and the bases all right, of the brazen sea that was in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans break and carried all the brass with them to Babylon. And the cauldrons, and the shovels, and the snuffers, and the bowls, and the spoons, and the vessels of brass, wherewith they ministered, he took them away. And this is what Jeremiah was saying, that they will break the temple. And the basins, and everything, the two pillars, which Solomon had made, verse 21, concerning the pillars, a fillet of whatever, and the chapter, he gives the details of everything. Then verse 24, and the captain of the guard took Seraiah, the chief priest, these are people who used to oppose Jeremiah. He took Seraiah the chief priest and Zephaniah the second priest and the three keepers of the door. And he also took out of the city an eunuch which had the charge of the men of war and seven men of them that were near the king's person which were found in the city. And the principal scribe of the host who mastered the people of the land and 70 men of the people of the land that were found in the midst of the city. So Nebuzaradan the captain of the guard took them and brought them to the king of Babylon to Ribla. And the king of Babylon smote them and put them to death in Ribla, in the land of Hamath. And then Judah was carried, carried away captive out of his own land. This is the people whom Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive in the seventh year. Three thousand Jews and three and twenty. And then in the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, he carried away from Cap from Jerusalem, 832 persons. And in the three and twentieth year of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captives of the Jews, 745 persons. All the persons together were 4,600. It's not over yet, too. Then it came to pass in the seven and thirtieth year of the captivity of Jehoiakim of Judah in the twelfth month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, another one is coming, in the first year of his reign, lifted up the head of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, and brought him forth out of prison. Uh, this one is, is better. And spake kindly unto him, and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon, and changed his prison garments. And he did eat bread continually before him all the days of his life. And for his diet, there was a continual diet given him of the king of Babylon. Every day a portion until his death, all the days of his life. So, Jeremiah's book ends with the details of how it happened. So, I just want you to know that God's word will surely come to pass. Amen. Amen. Even if it looks fantastic and amazing and impossible, it will by all means come to pass. And these prophets have lived it out and thrown it. So, Jeremiah... After the Jer- Jerusalem was fallen, came and wrote uh, lamentations and lamented about the sorrows and all the things that he that had happened. Amen. Amen. Then Ezekiel chapter one. It came to pass in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day. Of the man, as I was among the captives. Now the people are captive. You see, the thing is following a progression. Now they are all cap- in captivity. But you see, what I want you to know is that no matter what is happening in the world, God's plan is going on steadily. Steadily. Osama bin Laden may become, he may have twins, and they may come to the world to come and harass us. But God's plan. Is going on steadily. Now people are captive. People are carried away, far away. But here, you see, I was among the captives by the river of Chiba. That the heavens were opened. And I saw the visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity. 
the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Cheba. And the hand of the Lord was upon him. Hallelujah. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire, and a brightness was about it. And also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Every one of them had four faces. And every one had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings. On their four sides. And they had four faces they, and therefore had their faces and their wings. Hey. Have you seen this animal before? <laughs> Are you there? Okay. Now verse 28. And as the appearance of the bow, all right, that is goes describe a whole vision. If you are interested, you can read it. So was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face. And I heard a voice of one that spake. And he said unto me, Son of man, chapter 2, verse 1, Stand up upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. You remember this one? (laughs) You didn't know how it came to be there, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you just know that the spirit entered to me when he said goodbye. You didn't know how he came to be in that position, isn't it? He was being called. And he was having a vision. Do you see? And the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. And set me upon my feet that I heard him that speak unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel. A rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed. For they are impudent children. I do send thee unto them. And thou shalt say unto them. Hallelujah. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. They are a rebellious house. Yet they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Hallelujah. Now. Thou son of man. Be not afraid of them. Neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee. And thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words. Nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Hallelujah. Verse 7. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. See, pastors can be as rebellious as the people. Open thy mouth and eat that I will give thee. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentations and mournings and woe. (laughs) More trouble is coming on. Look, I finished reading and virtually i have finished preaching how many are blessed already how many have understood something new is that not so god's word will always come to pass success is not defined by how many people like you and i I want to say that knowing god you know if you look at people's calling like ezekiel's call you see that it's like similar to isaiah's call Similar to experience that John had. Isaiah was called in chapter 5. I, we, 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 scholars believe that he, his, his call is actually chapter 5. That's actually the beginning of the book. But chapter 1 to 4 are there. But from chapter 5, you see, when he saw the Lord, he said, Woe is me, I am undone. I think before you can be sent by somebody, you need to know about the person. Amen. You understand? You need to know about the person. And so that is why Ezekiel was shown this wild vision. And that vision, four faces, four wings, four heads, strange, the feet are like a calf's feet, which is like hoofs. Wild things. 
You know, all that, all that that tells you is that the spirit realm is totally different from what you think it is. It's, it's not like this place. Things that are going on there are completely different. And that is why it takes faith to turn onto the right road. You see, what I am doing, preaching, sending people out to the mission field, is, I believe, is the right thing. But it takes faith. And I do not intend to change that. I, don't, I do not intend to stop sending young men who are in the prime of their life out into some field somewhere. You get it? Because I'm not looking at what earthly things are like. And I'm not using earthly things to determine what is right. You know, we have some young, uh, young men, uh, missionaries, I mean young students who've been on the mission field a bit. And they come back and they're telling me stories. All kinds of stories about the mission fields. What it's like and how people really... I've noticed uh, in the last few days, after they've been out there to some of these towns and come back, many of them are saying, I'm now understanding what you've been talking about. There are people... There are so, so when you are in a cry, you have, an, you have a feeling that the work of God is really going on. When you go out, you see that there are towns, there are people, endless numbers of people who don't know Jesus Christ. One missionary was telling me that there is a town where they teach the people that Jesus Christ was a thief. That he stole wood, two by four, and they caught him. And they nail him on the cross. And they actually believe it. They nail him on the wood that he had stolen. May God have mercy. And there are towns in Ghana where they tell you, this is truly, the, the, we are worshipping idols. We can't listen to what you are talking about. We are idol worshippers. Brothers and sisters, I tell you, the realm of the spirit in heaven is so completely different. And that is why your rank in heaven will not be as you think it is now. It's not determined by what we are seeing here. It's something else. And so we now need to do well with God, to have faith. So Jeremiah had to have faith. He was crying. He said, these people, they can't believe me. There's nothing is going to be left here. It's going to be, you will be killed. There will be nothing. He said, teach the women how to cry. Teach them how to lament, how to mourn. This was his, his messages. And the people were angry. They said, throw him into a prison. Throw him into a dungeon. Send him to Egypt. Do this to him. Kill him. And there were times they were not sure whether to kill him or not. Is that success? No. Bishop Adi, don't try to impress people. Don't try to give a good message that people will like. Let's give the message of God. Let's not measure success by how many people are in attendance. That is not how God sees things to me. How many prophets are in the club? Or how many prophets are in agreement with what you are saying? Let us say what God is asking us to say. And I believe that we are going to be so blessed. And another very powerful thing that the Spirit of God stirred up in my heart, which I have mentioned already, is that no matter what is happening, His army is marching on. Now the people are in captivity. Visions are still taking place. Callings are still taking place. People are being commissioned. People are being sent. So no matter what is happening in the world, God's work, is, his, his mind is, is, is on what he is also doing. He's never changing his callings and he's sending people and assigning people and no matter who is living, who is dying, who is disobeying God, God's will and God's army is still marching on and he's still calling, 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 sending, calling and sending, calling and sending. No matter who obeys and who disobeys, you can have a whole nation destroyed, but God will still have somebody say, you, come, I have something for you to do. And I want you to be one of those people. I want you to be one of those people. And I want you to see some, no matter your unfortunate circumstances, eh, God can still call you. Because this was one of the refugees. He was by the river of Babylon. Remember the song, by the rivers of Babylon. He was one of the, by the rivers of Babylon. 
and there he had a vision. It means you can have a vision when you are in school. It means you can have a vision when you are when you are patching with somebody. It means you can have a vision when you are a very poor man. It means you can have a vision when you are in great difficulty. It means you can have a vision when you are almost like a prisoner. You can have a vision of heaven. And he saw heaven. May you see heaven. May you know God. May you know supernatural things. You know, if you know God, you'll not be afraid of men. That is our greatest problem. It is men. When you want to serve God, a man is nothing. No, no man is important. God is so great that there is no king who is important for you to know. Oh, how God has cured me of that. One of my least desires is to meet kings. But only recently I read that uh, he said, I'm, I'm filling your mouth to prophesy to nations, to peoples, and to kings. So some people have prophecies in their mouth for kings. Because there are some pastors who are supposed to go to kings. But to meet them, to know rich people, to move in the high society of life, to take pictures with them, to be friends of the upper classes and the upper echelons of society. What are they? Look, me, I've been to the mortuary many times, so I've seen the rich and the poor. They, they lie there alike. I've seen the, the cream, creme de la creme. I've seen the cream of society lying there, naked, worthless. I've seen rich people. I saw my own father lying in them. When they opened them, I've been a student there for years. When they opened the fridge, the eyes came out. And when the ice cleared, and I saw the cloth that my father sleeps with in the house, in the room, I saw that cloth on him, and he was lying there. I saw him with others. When they, first, when they opened the fridge door, there was ice. Ice. Then the, after some time, the ice cleared, and I saw. I said, that's my father. What are you? What are we? You might as well write what should happen when you die because that one is sure. Yes, that one is sure. Banker. When President Kennedy died, they sliced his brain within a few minutes. They were sliced and they were discussing. The president's brain, when we slice it like this, we re- was revealed the bullet passing through here, here, here. He had become meat. We are nothing. No man is anything. See President Kufo, in some short time he'll be gone. You meet him at Kingsway, you meet him at uh, Malcolm, the former president. Yeah. Former president. <laughs> Just like Dr. Hilali Man. Yeah. It's over. See your tomb for. One day, you'll be gone. They'll carry him away. All the rituals that they have performed, you have to complete them. <laughs> yeah. But when you see the heavens, you see what is there. You realize that you are not more than an antelope moving around. We are nothing. So I want to focus on God. That's why behind the book, before you read the book, they have something called about the author. About the author. So before you start hearing his commission, you see, God said to Jeremiah, uh, Ezekiel, say this. Uh, Before he tells, he starts talking about the author, about the one who is coming to send you. Comes. See who is sending you. See who is writing the book. See who is coming to say these simple words. And that is why most of our journey is to know who God is. Before he can even say, now go and speak my words about the author. And so you are supposed to learn about God. 
I said, you're supposed to know God. But by the time you know what you are dealing with, who you are dealing with, you will not be afraid of anybody. You will not be afraid to live in a village till you die. Last week, I sent five people. One to Asenkregua, one to Samra Boy, one, all of them are graduates from the university, Samra Boy, one to Hafasini, one to Axim, and one to Enchi. This last Tuesday, I said, go there. Be there. Live there. Live there and survive there. Die there. There are people there. Christ died for them. And there are more towns. You see, the district capitals of Ghana, we have about 120. And when we were counting our missions in Ghana, we have only about 42. There are more towns. All some of the towns we have had crusade, KJB, Jasikan, Pandu. There's no, we don't have any churches there. There are people. And there are other towns, Kwame Danso. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is he? Ebo? What are the places? Don Kokrom, Sebila, Ketekrachi, Inquanta, different places with people. I met with some students. I told them, don't come close to me. Yeah, I told them, don't be close, don't be close to me. Because if you are close to me, I will send you somewhere. <laughs> Yeah. And I, I and I don't want it's like I'm becoming friendly with you, then one day I'll send you it's like a surprise. No. I'm warning you in advance. If you become my friend, I will send you. And I don't want it to be a surprise to you. So I told her, don't be close to me. Because I don't want it to be as though. We were just fellowshipping happily. Then suddenly I brought up something that you were not expecting. I thought I would be sent to Vision Bookshop or I thought I would be given some development office administrator. No. Don't be close. Because the closer you get, I'll be looking at you with longing eyes. I said, Lord, this is another missionary. <laughs> oh, Lord, this is somebody I can send. <laughs> Don't get close. It is dangerous to be close to me. It is dangerous for me to know your name. Because when I know your name, I can easily mention your name at a meeting. Say, where is that guy? Bring him to me quickly. I need somebody for Kwame Danso. Okay, take Krachi. And very soon we are going to form like a net. You see, wherever you will be as a missionary, not more than 20 minutes when you drive, you will meet another missionary in the country. All over the place. You see them, they are there. Trying to win souls and tell the people about Jesus and about how he died for us. Look, if I'm too emotional for you or too young, listen, find a mature church where there is a dignified person. To preach. This is what I can say. This is what I have. This is what I have. Yeah. These are what I have. <laughs> it may not mean much to you, but it means a lot to me. Yes. It may not mean much to you. And when we finish the Ghana towns, the Nigeria towns will wait. Because we are coming to the Ni- small, small towns. You see that we are moving. And all over. Get your spirit ready. You see, do you know, Andrew Murray said something. He said that we are not able to have any effect in the world because we, we are not deep spiritually. So the church is not deep. And the church is not spiritual. Therefore, it has no effect. And he said, therefore, missionary work is now not effective. I should read to you some of the things. Apart, last time I read, I've seen more. Since that time, I've seen more. When he talks, he's sharing. You say, yeah, this is the word of God. I, 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 I want to send you. 
I really want to say, so don't come near. So when, I, when I see you and I get to know you, say, mm. my longing eyes will locate you. And you say, hey, the bishop has located you. <laughs> Start packing your bags. Are you listening to me? You know, one of the places I wanted to send a missionary to was Guinea. For a long time, I've been talking to the denomination manager. Look, we need to send somebody to Guinea, Guinea. Now, I put on the news, I saw the president uh, strike the nation. Some people have been killed. They started, to, they started to turn the country into Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, Burundi type. You see, because the places, they are open for seasons. At a certain point, judgment starts to come on the nation. So as we stay playing our games, even Ghana, Ghana is not under judgment. If God says that it is time for judgment, eh, you can't stay in Accra. You cannot. Maybe go for Ridwa or another place, but you can't stay here. You'll be surprised. Everything will change. So, brothers and sisters, no matter what is happening, no matter who is living, who is dying, he's still calling. He's calling you. He's sending you. His, his, his truth still matches on. When Catherine Kuman died, God raised up Benny Hinn. He's always calling somebody. When I was in first year university, some of you were not born. Who was not born? Raise your hand. You were not born. Look at them. When I was in first year, they were not born. Their parents had not yet had sex to conceive them. Their parents were not yet beloveds. That means that there are some people who are going to be born this year. Who are going to be your members in 20 years time. So if you also say... Bishop is the one who was called. No calling for you is not true. It's not true at all. You too hear a call. You can't say because Jeremiah had a call, Ezekiel should not be called. Now that we are by the river of Babylon, is there anybody here who can see visions? Ezekiel, God, I have seen a vision. I'm also called by God. I have seen mournings and lamentations and woes. I'm just like my brother Jeremiah. Analos. <laughs> May you be an alos. May you be anointed. May you have the anointing to serve him and to love him all the days of your life. Stand to your feet, everybody. Amen. Lift your hands and just thank God this evening. Thank him that his word always comes to pass. No matter what, his truth still matches on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that your truth still matches on. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you that you are still calling. No matter what has happened. No matter what's going on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your calling. Thank you for your anointing. We praise you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you thanks. We give you honor. Oh, Father, show us visions. Show us our own callings. Send us, Lord. Oh, Jesus. 
Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus, for your great blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lay your hands on your eyes. Father, touch our eyes, Lord, that we may see what is what is impossible to even imagine about heaven, about you, about the God who has called us, about the greatness of our Father which is in heaven. Bless our eyes. Touch and anoint our eyes. Like, oh God, you said to the church that their eyes should be anointed. Anoint these eyes now. Thank you for your blessing. Receive the anointing over your eyes. May you see visions of heaven. May you see visions of God. May you see visions of Jesus. May you see visions of angels. May God touch you. May God anoint you. May He commission you. May He send you. May He use you for your generation. May He use you for your day. May you be prepared for your day and for your time. May you not fail your generation. May you not fail the people that are waiting to hear of you, to hear from you, to hear what you have to say about God. May you not fail those to whom you have been sent. May you speak his word without fear. May you be successful before his eyes. May you be successful as far as God is concerned. May God anoint you. May he bless you. May you be lifted out of darkness. May you know what is true. May you know what is right. May you be delivered from delusions. Lies of the devil. May you be delivered from darkness. May you understand God. May you see God. May you know Him who has called you in Jesus' name. Lift your hand and thank God right now. Father, thank you for your great blessing and your anointing. We receive it. We thank you, dear Lord. Just thank Him for clarity, insight. Confusion is gone. Clarity. Of spirit and of understanding has come. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.